All right, so I'd heard, I'd heard that Toyota is in fact making one fully electric vehicle. I mean, we know them to make all kinds of great hybrids, but they are actually making one EV called the BZ4X, but I'd never seen them on the road. I feel like it's super rare to actually see a BZ4X or a Solterra, which I'll talk about in later. But I finally have come to understand why. I've been living with the BZ4X for the past couple days, about a week now, and uh, crazy thing is it's it's actually pretty nice in a lot of ways, but there's one major flaw, one major reason why I could never recommend it over others in its class. So let's just jump right into that. So this is the BZ4X right here. It's this Model Y sized, Ionic 5 sized, EV6 sized, you know, crossover. It's got the hatchback style. It's higher off the ground. It's got a good amount of storage and it's fully electric. All right. So Toyota, being a pretty reputable manufacturer, you'd think would have a lot of the fundamentals down, and it does. But the one flaw is the BZ4X's fully electric range is, I'll put it right here, it's about 220 miles. I'm driving it in the winter. It's showing me 199 miles of range on a full charge. And it's not the fastest charging vehicle in the world. That is its major flaw. Because as a crossover for forty to $50,000, the rest of it is actually pretty solid. It's a Toyota. They know how to make good cars. It's a good interior, good space, all that stuff. But everything else I'm about to say is kind of in spite of the deal breaker range. If you can live with that sort of tiny range, then actually this is probably a fine commuter vehicle for you. But yeah, that that was a deal breaker for me. But aside from that, I mean, look, look at this thing. It's got a fairly unique look. I feel like it's actually a really good looking car. It's got these similar to the Prius these angular looking headlights that slant down here to the middle. And it does have a lot of this black contrast, uh, which actually interestingly goes over this huge uh, charge port door. So that's kind of cool. And then there's a whole bunch of black contrast back here. And then this huge double spoiler back here and all the slanted glass. I think it actually looks pretty nice. This thing starts at $43,000 base and goes up to uh, right into the 50s. So. Forty to fifty thousand dollars, let's say, which is the same class as Ionic Five, and Ionic Five has a lot of the same styles, but is a little bit of a weaker, more plasticky interior. But if you're just talking pure fundamentals, you know, power liftgate, the premium trim has bigger wheels and a little bit more power. But in general, I mean, nothing lacking here. This big subwoofer in the back for the JBL sound system. These fold flat. You can see, super easy. Ton of space for long items. And uh, always got to show the sub trunk here. There you go. A little bit of sub trunk. Now, have you ever heard the term compliance vehicle before? It's not a compliment, but you know, in the US especially, we have all these regulations where the average of a vehicle lineup for an entire company has to reach a certain level as far as emissions. And in order to keep making the cars that have more higher emissions, they, they end up making some that are way below the line to average it out better. And usually you don't wanna buy those way below the line cars, those compliance cars that bring the average down. Weirdly, I don't think this is technically one of those cars for Toyota, but it feels like they made an EV because they had to and then sort of just shipped it and didn't care too much. I mean, Toyota's strategy is pretty notably to ship a lot of hybrids. And so that's what they're doing. But this being their one EV, it kind of feels like they missed out on an opportunity to show a really great EV drivetrain or what it's like to build an electric car from the ground up. But I say all that, and I also think there's a lot of great things about the rest of this car just because Toyota's good at making cars. They do a good job of making you feel like you get a bunch of different materials, especially on the inside. I'll sit in the back seat here, and I do have a good amount of leg room. It's not the most foot room ever, but you get this uh, heated seats in the back. You get the USB-C ports for power real physical air vents, and a fixed sunroof, but this uh, cover here will slide forward if you want it to. But hey, speaking of USB-C ports, they're always great to have, obviously, but uh, shout out to Denvix for sponsoring this video. They make this right here, which is a tire inflator, but also a massive USB battery bank, which I've just defaulted to keeping in my car all the time, no matter what, because it's just something I wanna have with me everywhere. So this right here, it's a 15,000 milliamp hour battery and a compressor. So it's all gonna fit in this little box right here. This is good for inflating up to seven standard tires, which it can actually do at, they're claiming like twice the rate 
of a normal portable tire inflator. But then if you actually flip this little flap open right here, that is a USB-C port and a USB-A port. And this thing will do up to 45 watts out to fast charge, whether you have a, a phone or a tablet or literally a laptop. So it's pretty clear how it works. You can choose whatever PSI you want or go through a bunch of different presets. But I think my favorite feature underrated back here on the back is actually a light. It's like an ultra bright light, like side of the highway, finishing up, inflating your tires, super useful, or a little camping light or an emergency side of the road light that'll blink red for you. So all in all, I'm not taking this out of my car anytime soon. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check it out, but yeah, that's it. Now back to the BZ4X. But it gets even more obvious when you sit in the front because you remember the Prius, right? The Prius, is one of actually the most popular videos on this entire channel, but also one of the most recognizable common cars on the street. And uh, the driver's seat of the BZ4X has a lot of Prius to it. So here's the driver's position of the BZ4X. And right away, you probably see what I'm talking about as far as, you know, there's some cloth up here and some plastic and some piano black. I don't love all this piano black that cars are doing lately, but this is what I mean when I say Prius-like. This is that display that they put up front right in your line of sight, just like the Prius does. You have a very Prius-like steering wheel. You have a power button right here, and then you get the normal Toyota software, which does do wireless Android Auto, which I've been using, but it's actually pretty good software too. And you jump up there and you can see all the stuff you'd normally wanna see while driving. Right now, what is it saying? 60% battery, 125 miles of range. So 250-ish miles full. That's a little generous in the cold. And then here's your software. So it's probably gonna start showing, yeah, the music that I was listening to. <laughs> and then just looking around at materials, I mean, it's solid. So again, I'm gonna compare this mentally to Ionic 5, which had a lot of that fabric and that plastic here. This is gonna be showing me a lot of the same stuff, but I've got some real physical buttons here, which I like. They're a little bit annoying that they're capacitive and not just like actual buttons, but you can at least see them and they're in the same exact spot every single time and they're not horrible. Please don't make this piano black next time, Toyota. Uh, this is your drive mode selector. You shift down and then turn or hit the button here to park. And then you've got X mode, which is kind of like an off-road mode. You have eco mode. You have a button to view the cameras quickly and the cameras are really nice. It's got this clear top-down view where you can see everything around the car, but the car is clear. It's really clever. I like it. And then this button right here is, it's kind of like one pedal driving, but not quite. Basically this button means add the liftoff regen, please. And then this button is your brake hold, but it's not exactly one pedal driving. You still will have to go down to like two, three miles an hour and then use the brakes to finish. I wish I could do full one pedal driving, at least as an option in this car, but it doesn't do it. And then just as far as pure layout, I do like the driver's position and all the stuff that's very Prius-like. I don't actually love how wide this center console is. It's really, really wide left to right. It does have this little spot where you can put your phone and it will charge almost any phone. It didn't like agree with the positioning of the S24 Ultra. It would turn on and then back off. See, it's not wireless charging, but for the iPhone, it would line up perfectly every time, and I guess that's probably the phone a lot of people are going to have here. But there's this storage underneath here, very shallow, but another spot for your phone up here and a USB port. Cool. It's just really wide. <laughs> and so it makes it feel like this car is a little more uptight, cramped than it maybe should be for this size. But then you drive it, you know, it is a smooth ride. The dampers are pretty soft. I mean, this is going to be a totally regular car to drive, not in any fancy way. Um, I'll show you this too, because it's a little bit unique. Huh. Huh. Um, and then I'll say, I do, like I said, I wish it had one pedal driving, but visibility is really good. You can, I'm actually going to close this sunroof because the sun is shining directly on my forehead right now. And I kind of wish it would open as a moonroof, but that's totally cool that it doesn't. I, I think a lot of cars in this price range just have the fixed glass roof and the JBL speakers do sound pretty good. They get quite loud and the volume on the steering wheel is right here. And this is your forward and backward for your music. Overall, solid fundamentals. So I'm driving this car around and the more I drive it, the more I feel like it's more or less a Prius XL. Like this is a taller, higher off the ground, hatchback, super efficient, 
decently quick if you stab it, but that range. The Prius has like a bazillion miles of range if you fill it with gas. And this one, no solar, no extra trinkets or tidbits about it. It's just 230-ish miles absolute maximum and then find a public charger and good luck. That's its weakness. That's its Achilles. But really the thought I'm left with after this experience is Toyota's strategy, it's a fascinating one. They are so all in with hybrids. I mean, we all know about Prius Prime, RAV4 Prime, a bunch of other hybrids in their lineup. I used to drive a, a Camry hybrid for a while. And that's, that's just what they do. But meanwhile, you look across the aisle, you've got Hyundai, you've got Kia, you've got a bunch of others that are putting out a bunch of electric cars right now. And it feels like they're flagshipping those electric cars. They're really making a big deal out of them, running tons of ads for them. And I think I may have seen one ad for the BZ4X, but it's clear that Toyota's still in hybrid camp. And I wonder if, I wonder if that's the way to go right now. Because <laughs> EVs are still so young in their tech and so expensive for what you get out of them. And this feels like a good example of that. Only 220, 230 miles of range when you can get a Prius right now that does a lot of the same stuff and for less money. So let me know what you think. Hybrid camp and make an example out of the EV or EV forward. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.